Do you work? Do you work for a corporation? Have you noticed that things are not the same as they used to be? Let's go. Welcome from Root to Fruit. As a Canadian Christian Orthodox homeschooling mother that also works, many challenges arise. Come with me as I explore these issues, all of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's go on a journey together from Roots to Fruit. As this podcast includes working parents, I think it is important to have an honest discussion about the workplace. Our jobs take up a big part of our lives and what happens there does affect other aspects of our lives, such as our mood, our confidence, finances, relationship, marriage, and etc. Over the last 15 years or so, I've observed a negative shift in the workplace, one that is constantly overlooked, and it is my belief that we really haven't talked about this much, at least this was the case until recently, where I've noticed more of a discussion about this. In this episode, I'll be talking about corporate office jobs since a good chunk of people work in these type of environments or are affected by it. It is my view that this is where the problem lies in terms of toxic workplaces. Additionally, this toxic environment has had a significant impact on our society. I should also add that I have noticed the corporate office culture has spread to other industries as well, so there may be others out there who can relate to this major shift. I'll be doing several episodes on the corporate world since there are many moving parts. I've been working for most of my life. I started when I was 12 and I haven't stopped. Throughout that time, I've learned from three generations, the silent, the boomers, and Gen X. However, it wasn't until the millennial generation entered the workforce that myself and others have noticed a major shift in the work ethic and work culture. It shifted from a family-friendly environment to a more of a narcissistic one. Also, there was a decline in production and willingness to work, with an increase in playtime, participation trophies, favoritism, and nepotism. We also saw a decline in respect and empathy for one another. Issues with a corporate environment is nothing new. We heard about it from our parents. We've even seen it in movies, shows, and songs from the past, such as Dollar Parton's 9 to 5. But even then, it was understood that people have families and a life outside of the office and that working beyond work hours is considered overtime. In addition, no one back then would have accepted the current state of office environment. This current behavior would have been seen as childish, Unfortunately, things have worsened over the years and in some cases have become unbearable and hostile. This shift has been largely due to the generational change. Regardless of who you ask, they will tell you that there is a major difference between generations. Most people will acknowledge that they have noticed more changes in the last decade or so. In the past, the changes between generations were more gradual, less drastic, and not a big issue. Naturally, the generations had disputes, but can still relate to one another on some level. Regardless of these differences, the younger generations were able to communicate and gain knowledge from their senior employees. The older employees were respected for their experience. In turn, they treated the younger employees with a sense of decency and helped out as much as they could. Sadly, this doesn't happen anymore. The older are viewed as washed up and out of touch and useless. Young employees are seen as innovative, refreshing, and intelligent despite their lack of experience. Generations are having a hard time relating to one another, and in my opinion, all of this started with how kids were taught in public schools and media influences. Lots of people blame the parents, and yes, the parents do share some of the blame. But as mentioned in previous episodes, the children spend most of their day with strangers, away from their parents and family. These influences are teaching kids that everyone is special. They could do no wrong, no competitions, no need for hard work, no hardship, and discussing differences of opinion is not allowed. They're also taught that the past is filled with primitive people that had isms. Old people should be ignored and looked down upon. Furthermore, media doesn't help, especially since kids are hooked on screens from a young age. This attitude isn't always corrected with homeschooling. And if it is, then it can be hard to maintain with all the influences. In general, public schools, movies, shows, and social media have taught us wrong life lessons, attitudes, and behaviors. Lessons like ethics and morality are fluid and change with the times, and now we're seeing the results of such upbringing in the workforce, and it's just not working. Before we go any further, we should talk about the definition of a generation. A generation should be about 20 to 30 years, but the definition of what a generation is has changed. Now, when they say a generation, they mean a social generation, not an actual generation. It is no longer based on a set number of years, but on social changes in society. 
This has caused much confusion and no one can keep the generations straight. This has also created many generations to be alive at one time. In the not so distant past, there would have been approximately four generations living at the same time. Now there are seven. In addition, I have seen all sorts of years for each generation. The only year that seems to be consistent is the start of the boomers, which is 1946. All the other years don't seem to be consistent and even change with time. Even the terms are not consistent. For example, I found a book titled Generation X from 1964 that talks about the youth at the time which today would be considered the boomers. Another example is that during my teenage years, we were told that Generation Y was a subgeneration from 1980 to 1990 to deal with a sudden change in society. That quickly disappeared, and now millennials are also known as Gen Y. Mind you, when we were growing up, no one really cared about what generation you were from. There really wasn't much of a discussion. In my opinion, this changed with the millennials. What I mean by this is that for a long time, far more than the last decade, society has been shifting for the worse. But when millennials became teenagers, this is when it became more obvious. This is when those who were ignoring social changes could no longer do so. And this is when society started complaining about millennials instead of recognizing that this didn't occur in one generation, but rather over many. This is also when they started moving back the years from when millennials started. And honestly, I've seen all sorts of years, including mid-70s. None of this makes sense. Even if you want to go with a social generation definition, then it still doesn't make sense. Someone born in the early 80s or late 70s typically has a different childhood and social reference than those born in the mid 80s and after. There's a good article that discusses this. I will leave the link in the description. All of this is messed up, confusing, and even made up. What is not confusing is that there are clear differences between the older generations, the silent boomers and Gen X, and the younger generations, millennials, Gen Z, Gen A, and whatever else there is. For those in between or on the cusp, then I would go with whatever that person identifies with. The differences in the generation have really changed the workforce, and many of us are having a hard time dealing with these changes regardless of age. Even though work ethics have changed over the decades and over the generations, there was still a form of work ethic. The debate back then was more about how do we do the work, the best ways, efficiencies, productivities, etc. But in the last 15 years, there's been a shift, especially in the last 10, and now it's very noticeable. Work ethic has become more about socializing, games, and favoritism. It went from a respectful professional environment to a catty high school environment. I should also add that this is an overgeneralization, but in my opinion, each generation works differently. Boomers view work as their life. They worked hard, provided for themselves, their families, and society. They cared about society as a whole and wanted to do the best for society and their families. Back then, the harder you worked, the more you got. They worked many hours, maybe too many, but at least got back what they put in. You were able to move on in the company if you so wish. People were loyal and careers were usually a lifelong commitment. They understood that a foundation needs to be laid before you can build your tower. However, they lived in a time of great prosperity and opportunity, yet maintained a fairly simple life. And in that time, without digital technology, which means they knew how to live without it. Generation X believes in the work to live, not live to work philosophy. They understood that work is a means to an end, not an end of itself. We are called the last feral generation, the latchkey kids, slackers, and even the forgotten generation. We grew up on our own, taught ourselves, had little guidance, and experienced several recessions. We not only survived it, but learned from it. Furthermore, we saw the birth of all sorts of modern technology, including the personal computer, cell phones, and the internet. We know how to live with and without all of it. Due to the fact that we went through many recessions, job searching was hard, and we had to get creative, real creativity, with real ingenuity. We are often forgotten, but haven't forgotten others. We understood what previous generations did. We appreciated it, acknowledged them, and respected them and then built upon it, improved it, and made it more efficient. We worked really hard for eight hours a day, but we stopped the working clock there because being with our family and friends is more important, and we have no time for BS. Millennials and Gen Z are often categorized as advanced, intelligent, innovative, creative, and amazing. This is the generation that requires safe spaces, can't listen to criticism or differences of opinion, focuses on isms that divide us instead of being united, and needs games and participation trophies to be engaged. They want to work as little as possible, but want credit for the group effort, plus constant validation. Their cell phones and the internet have replaced God, family, and real connections with others. They feel lost, empty, disconnected, and can't communicate without it. They have no experience or no independence, and they mature later in life. 
They criticize every generation prior to them, yet they're not interested in learning or even understanding what came before them. They view old people as washed out, who are out of touch and shouldn't even be considered. They have no interest in family life. They say they want a work-life balance, but that ends up translating to work for short periods of time with lots of play. Their main focus is on what material pledges bring them, not what is right or good for themselves and others around them. Work is another place to socialize. They are also viewed as being shortchanged in life and have been dealt a bad hand. A good example to demonstrate the differences between the generations is with the blackouts. In the early 2000s, we had a blackout that lasted for several days. Part of the east side of Canada in the U.S. had no power whatsoever. That means our fridges, ovens, water, lights, AC, cell phones, internet, and anything else that needs electrical power wasn't working. Yet we didn't have a crisis. Instead, we worked together. Stores were selling off their food to anyone that had cash and even started to hand them out for free. Regular people were on the streets directing traffic. People were having barbecues or using their fireplace as an oven. People were checking in with each other with this thing called a landline. Neighbors were helping each other. People were having get-togethers to share their food before it spoils. Others read books, but no matter how you spent that week, most of us did it together and we made the most of it. Now, let's fast forward to last year, when for one day there was only one telecommunication company that was down. Everything else was running and you could still use phones and internet, but just not from that company. More importantly, all essentials were up and running. The only thing that was a problem was that the emergency service was down, which begs the question, whose bright idea was it to remove landlines from the emergency services? Anyways, for that one day, people were freaking out, as if it was the sign that the world was about to end. And for days after that, the same people went to recovery mode. You see, the older generations know the priorities, what is important, how to survive, and how to adapt. They tend to learn from their mistakes as well. They got trophies for working hard, winning, and accomplishing something. And they truly want to make society a better place. They want unity, not division. They respect those that came before them. They hold values, ethics, and morals in high regard. The younger generations were taught that right and wrong were whatever you feel like that day. There's no failing or consequences, so what's the point of trying? They want participation trophies, validation just for showing up. They were taught that the world revolves around them, their needs, and their pleasures. They were taught that values, morals, and ethics are based on the current year. These ideas are now present and well in the corporate world, and it's just not working. But it's causing many problems, especially since such individuals don't question the world around them or care about working together. The concept of being the bee no longer exists, which is to take the good and leave the bad. This leaves a gap open for the employer to take advantage of the employees. It is also a recipe for a toxic environment. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your time. If you want to know more about me and my podcast, please visit me at my website for more information at fromrootstofruit.podbean.com. May you be blessed from roots to fruit.